I think what schools aren't doing right at the moment is they're not paying careful attention enough to the growth of young people as learners. Schools traditionally have not, surprisingly, not have a very good vocabulary for talking about young people as learners. They've tended to use rather crude lenses to look at young people through things like ability and achievement and effort and conduct and how well behaved they are, those kinds of things. And actually one of the things that they are developing very fast is a richer vocabulary for talking about young people as learners. So using language like becoming more inquisitive, learning to ask better questions, becoming better at collaborating with other people. For example, when they write reports, actually picking up and naming the qualities that they say they value and weaving those into uh, the working practices of the school. So developing the language is a very important uh, thing that schools are not doing. And uh, I suppose the other thing is that they're really not monitoring the development of young people as powerful learners. They're monitoring, you know, unauthorized absences and GCSE results, but they don't do the same job. We need to find a whole suite of smarter ways of telling whether young people are indeed becoming more confident and capable and enthusiastic learners in school and out of school as well. Many young people today are experiencing relatively high levels of stress. Uh, you see that in their acting out, in the recklessness, in the levels of anxiety and depression, in the uh, horrifying levels of self-harm in young men as well as young women. Uh, classic symptoms of stress. Stress is what happens when people experience a level of demand in their lives which significantly exceeds the resources that they believe they have to cope with those demands. One of the problems with school is that it's not helping young people become more resourceful in dealing with the demands, developing the mental toughness and the mental flexibility to deal with real complicated, demanding, challenging stuff out there, not just in schools, but outside. And worse than that, many young people, we can tell from the thousands of calls to Childline, ex uh, exam time every year, many young people are experiencing school predominantly as another heavy weight on the demand side of their lives. And I think we really have to shift that around because it's the fundamental um, responsibility of education to be building that resource. Education is a preparation for the future and handing on the treasures of the past is always instrumental, is always subordinate to that goal. And if we're not actively building young people's confidence and capacity to learn and to cope with difficulty, and instead are simply making their lives more stressful and more demanding, then I think we've really lost our way in education and we need to get back on track pretty rapidly. And that's what the kinds of things I'm talking about are designed to do. Parents can make an enormous contribution to helping to build the mental toughness and the mental flexibility which their children are going to need. And it's not very difficult. Simply uh, asking children, inviting them to ask good questions, to ask better questions, asking them whether they asked good questions in school rather than asking them what they did in school or what did you learn today, which usually gets a rather minimal answer from young people. Um, making the home more of a learning environment. So actually uh, modelling, parents modelling, for example, what we don't know, what we're finding out, what we found hard, talking about their own learning journeys and involving aunts and uncles and grandparents in that uh, linguistic medium of talking about learning stories and overcoming difficulties and so on. And I think one of the other big things that parents can do and sometimes get wrong is always talking to their young people as if learning was something that they could get better at and as if finding things difficult or making mistakes were simply temporary um, experiences on the way to becoming more competent. One of the pitfalls that parents sometimes fall into, as well as teachers, is assuming that if a child can't do something now, that means they lack the ability to do it, particularly things like writing and mathematics and uh, English and so on. And that simply isn't true. Everybody has the ability to get smarter at learning. 
and at becoming more, um, more flexible in the face of difficulty. And we need parents to be talking to children about, so what strategies could you develop to do that better? How could you learn to persist more? And not saying, never mind, sweetheart, you're never going to be a rocket scientist which is sort of saying there's no point in you trying because you haven't got it in your genes. It's a council of despair, really. And that really doesn't help people develop the enthusiasm to grow.